Hey, it's Justin here. We're going to be playing The Uncle Who Works for Nintendo. I have no idea what this game is about. All I know is that it is a clicking an option and reading a lot of stuff game. So, this game makes extensive use of sound. Play with headphones for the best experience. Occasionally, it may take control of your browser. It is not optimized for mobile or content and trigger warnings. Click here. Okay. Sorry if you can see the uh, mouse pointer. I think it's it would be a lot better with it on anyway. So This is a horror game. It does not make use of screamers or jump scares. Sound effects are used for tension and atmosphere. Some playthroughs may encounter plot points concerning a possible suicide thematically. Many aspects of this game may recall the emotional abuse experienced by children at the hands of adults and, very often, other children. Hmm. Let's get started. You are 11 years old. What is your best friend's name? Let's go for... Sarah. Your best friend Sarah has invited you to a sleepover at her house this weekend. Oh, joy. You've been friends since first grade, so asking your mom is basically only a formality. Ask me, mother. You've never confirmed this, but you suspect the babysitter may charge extra when there are two kids. You sometimes feel like staying somewhere else is the only way you can help out. What a nice child I am. Alright. On Friday night, you're home for only a few hours. Long enough to pack, get in a fight with your younger sister... Pack some more and watch some TV. At 6 sharp, you're standing on a sidewalk outside Sarah's house while your mom idles in her, car, in her car nearby. She leans out the window to you. You, be, you behave yourself, okay? She says. As always, I'll be at work, but if anything happens, you call me. Yes, ma'am. I'll pick you up tomorrow at 3, she says again as usual. But then she pauses, looking up at the sky, which has been overcast throughout the day. If you play outside, she adds, be careful, it's probably gonna rain. Kiss mom goodbye. After you part, your mom drives down the street disappearing around the corner. You turn back to Sarah's house. The lights inside are glowing warmly. You can see Sarah waving at you from her bedroom on the second floor. Head inside. It's 6 p.m. Okay. Whee! Sarah's mom meets you inside. Hello, she says. Dinner will be ready in just a few minutes, but you can dress. You can drop stuff off in the den. You and Sarah are camping out there tonight. Okay. You drop your sleeping in overnight bags in a corner of the den, and then pause to look around. Behind the couch, a grandfather clock is ticking softly. Through a set of patio doors on the far side of the room, you can see the sky is just as gray as it was when your mom left. Framed pictures line the walls and over the dark fireplace hangs a monstrous pair of antlers from a buck that Sarah's dad shot years ago. And of course, there's a big screen TV. Sometimes it makes you uncomfortable how much nicer Sarah's house is than yours. Anyway... Whoa, a scroller! You drop your sleeping and overnight bags in the corner of the den, and then pause to take a look around. Behind the couch, a grandfather clock is ticking softly. Through a set of patio doors on the far side of the room, you can see the sky is just as gray as it was when your mom left. Didn't I read that? Wait. Whoa. I read that. Frame pictures line the wall, but shot yours. Oh yeah, I read that also. And there's a big screen TV. Anyway. Sarah enters, entered the room while you weren't paying attention, and she now stands in the doorway, smiling expectantly. Are you ready for dinner? She says. She asks, sure. Dinner passes quickly. Tonight's meal is spaghetti and meatballs, one of Sarah's favorite meals, as her mother points out while piling a helping on your plate. Sarah's father cracks a beer and joviali, 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 joviali. Javially, I I don't know, interrogates you about how much trouble you and Sarah are getting into school. 
What about that? Wait, that wasn't a beer at all. That's a glass of lemonade. Why would you even think it was beer? Sarah's father doesn't drink alcohol. You're quite certain of that fact, now that you've remembered it. Well, whatever. Sarah's father sips a lemonade. Alright. Dessert is heaping bowls of ice cream drizzled in chocolate sauce. You can't even finish yours. Grandfather clock in the dying den chimes. You go along. You go along now, says Sarah's mom. Smiling from her side of the table. We'll clean up in here. Let's go get the TV ready, says Sarah. The two of you leave the dining room and head upstairs. Is a den upstairs? Does it really matter? I don't, I don't, uh, I have no idea. Sarah's room is immense. You stay in the den because the TV is larger there. But there's a sizable one here, flush with the wall, opposite the full size bed. We'll take the N we'll take the 64 down first, says Sarah, heading toward her TV and opening the entertainment center cabinet. Very fancy. It's her para it's her pre prerogative prerogative, of course. She gets to choose what you play first, usually. But as Sarah begins unhooking the cords of the N64 from the TV, you catch the sight of the other things she has in there. All of the major stuff, an old NES, SNES, a PlayStation, a Dreamcast, but some other things too, things you don't really recognize. A large black box with green highlights, that would be an Xbox, a smaller purple one, a strange white and yellow tower with what looks like gloves resting on hooks on other side, either side. A compact white cone. What are these? Sarah looks at the clutter in the cabinet. Oh yeah, she says. They're pretty cool. I can't show them to you though. They're still secret. I promised my uncle. Of course, you suddenly remember her uncle. The uncle who works for Nintendo. In the corner of the grandfather clock is ticking softly. Through a nearby set of patio doors, you can see it's getting quite dark. It's seven. Framed pictures line the walls. You walk around the perimeter of the den, inspecting the pictures idly. Most of them are fair family portraits from years past. Sarah cradled lovingly between her mother and father, or any of the other three, on their own. A happy, tidy family. You don't find any. Not one. The only pictures here are Sarah and her parents. You don't know why that makes you feel uneasy. Time passes. It's 7 30. Uh, let's go to the kitchen. Head towards the kitchen thinking you grab a soda. You thinking you may grab a soda from the fridge. On the way, you have to head through the dining room. Sarah's mom and dad are still there. The table hasn't yet been cleared, and they're still sitting in the exact same places you left them. In fact, you realize they aren't moving at all. They sit there, completely still, like mannequins. Sarah's dad is holding up his glass of lemonade as if getting ready to take a drink. Sarah's mom has her head turned and her mouth slightly open, as if she froze immediately after you and Sarah left the dining room. Hello? They don't respond. Thunder rumbles outside, but they don't seem to notice. Please, are you okay? They aren't even blinking. Let's go to the kitchen. The dining room is behind you. You're in the end. You you are in the empty kitchen. The dining room is behind you. You aren't going back that way. You just aren't. 
Well, I already got here, so I might as well grab some soda and exit the kitchen. You head back to the den. The clock chimes. Not in the den. What time is it now? Eight? I'm guessing time plays a part in this. You tell Sarah what you saw. What? She asks, looking over her shoulder at you and pausing her game. <clears throat> Are you sure? She asks, Sarah says, frowning at you. I bet they're just being weird. Give me a second. As she stands and moves out of the room, she points back at the, at the 64. You could play the game if you want. Yeah, sure, play a little. After a moment of hesitation, you sit down and play the game Sarah's been running. It's a little like Star Fox, but it's not a game you're familiar with. The colors are a little weird. Still, it's relaxing. After a while, Sarah comes back. They look fine to me, Sarah says Sarah. Mom said she's gonna bring us some popcorn. But I saw... Nice try for a prank, though, says Sarah. Seemingly ignoring you. Oh, and one more thing. She says while she resumes her spot in front of the Nintendo. Thanks for setting me out then. Mom made me help her clean up after all. Special company. What? Oh, my uncle's coming to visit. Dude. Time passes. To the south. 8.30. I just had some soda, so I might as well. You head to the bathroom down the hall from the den. There's a shower, a linen closet, and a toilet. The shower is pristinely clean. It's a linen closet filled with large fluffy towels and a washcloth. Not sure why you're looking there. Are you finished? And a toilet. Go to the bathroom and wash your hands. Are you done here? Go back back to the den. Clock chimes, you're in the den. Sarah's mother bustles into the room, holding a large ceramic bowl filled with popcorn under her arm. Your jaw tightens as she casts a sunny smile in your direction. There's no sign of the horror of a mannequin you saw earlier. How are you kids doing, she asks. Good, says Sarah, her eyes not moving from the television. I hope you're having fun, says Sarah's mom. Here's some popcorn. Extra butter. <laughs> she places it on the floor by Sarah. Almost immediately, Sarah's shoveling popcorn in her mouth. Meanwhile, her mom smiles first at her and then back at you. There's sodas in the kitchen if you get thirsty, she says. And some pizza from the other night if you get hungry. Uh, thank you. She looks at Sarah. Your father's gone to bed. I'll be there soon myself. I want you two to keep quiet, all right? Yes, Mom, Sarah says tiredly. Oh, and I, before I get, she adds, your uncle called. He's running a little late, some bad weather out his way, but he says he'll be here around midnight. For the first time, Sarah stops playing her game, stops eating popcorn, and turns to look at her mother. Okay, she says. I want you two to welcome him in. He'll be very tired and very hungry, so, so offer him something to eat before he goes to bed. Okay, Mom. Good night, kids. And with that, she's gone. Uh, what time is it? Nine? Bowl of popcorn on the ground, on the floor. Grab a handful of popcorn. It's buttery and delicious. So talk to Sarah. Ask about parents. How are your parents doing? What are you talking about? Says Sarah. They're fine, I guess. How's your mom? Sarah doesn't even look at you. My dad doesn't drink, she says. She says. Yeah, I know. That's why it was so weird. Because when I looked again, it was just a glass of lemonade. This seems to catch Sarah's attention as she stops playing the game and turns to look at you. Are you sure you saw that? Yeah, totally weird, huh? Yeah, says Sarah. And then she grins at you. Maybe you're losing it. 
So much for that. School? Damn. It occurs to you that even though Sarah does really well in school, you seem to remember her having tr some trouble earlier in the year. You ask what's up, but receive no answer. It begins raining outside. Ten. Two hours until the uncle comes. Why would I want to think about her uncle? That's kind of weird. Ask about uncle's visit. So why is your uncle coming up? Sarah shrugs business, but I thought he worked for Nintendo. He does, says Sarah, frowning but not looking away from the TV screen. He's really important there. Does Nintendo have a lot of business here? Why else would my uncle be coming? Sarah says, as if you asked the dumbest question in the world. Well... Oh, what sort of business? Sarah pauses the game and turns towards you. Visibly agitated. How should I know? I don't work for them. Right now she's not quite yelling, but if but you think if you keep pressing the subject, she might. I'm not sure I believe you about your uncle. Sarah takes a moment to respond. As if she's not quite sure she heard you correctly. What? I don't believe your uncle works for Nintendo. You think you've finally done it? Sarah stands up, fists clenched at her sides, mouth twisting horribly as she struggles to say something. You watch as she takes a step toward you. You clench your teeth and wait. Sarah darts toward and pushes you back in onto the hardwood floor, cracking your skull against the carpet. Take a moment to be dazed. You lie there, expecting another punch or a kick, but you, but to your surprise, nothing happens. Slowly, you sit up and see Sarah standing there, arms still stiff as her, at her sides, breathing heavily. You realize she is close to crying. Are you, I'm sorry, are you okay? Sarah shakes her head as if remembering something. Never mind, she says, just never mind. You ought to say something more, but she's already re immersed in the video game. You take a breather. It's still 10. Well, I can't talk to her. Talk to her about something else I think was here. And I can't talk about the uncle anymore. About Sarah's uncle. It began with Mew. You didn't believe her at first when Sarah came to school one day and told you she had finally caught Mew. Prove it, you said. So she pulled out her Game Boy and showed you. There it was, Mew, the 151st Pokemon, and available only to players at promotional events, somehow unlocked on Sarah's game. It's really strong, she said. It KOs every enemy in one hit. Sarah demonstrate this claim at recess when you and some other friends link Game Boys to do battle. You're the first one down. No one else got in a single hit on Sarah's Mew. In a few days, everyone had quit playing Pokemon at recess. The allure had faded. You asked how Sarah managed to get it. Oh, my uncle got a job at Nintendo, said Sarah. You were walking home together past one of the construction crews. Sarah still lived next door to you at the time. There had been a storm not too long ago. Trees were down and all over town. <clears throat> Buildings had collapsed. You were standing at an intersection with Sarah as a truck rumbled by, loaded up with rag, rag, ragged tree trunks. What a bad storm. Wait, this couldn't have been too long ago. When did Sarah move? There was something nice about being neighbors. Alright. He also got me this new Game Boy, said Sarah, pulling it out of her pocket. You hadn't noticed it earlier, but yes, Sarah now had a sleek new Game Boy Color. Until today, she had one of the old ones, the big gray brick like yours. This one's a special edition, said Sarah. Isn't it cool? You agree. You snapped out of your reflections. What time is it now? 10.30. Remember my own. You got your own Mew, eventually. 
Your other friend had a game shark, which you borrowed one day. You spent the entire night unlocking every Pokemon you couldn't obtain in your copy of game or hadn't yet traded for, including Mew. It didn't one-hit KO most enemies. It was incredibly weak, and you shamefully cheated the game further to make it strong enough. It even looked different from Sarah's. You asked her why. Not, well, not yet. Your Mew was small, even cute, standing there with his round, cheerful eyes. But when Sarah's had wiped everyone out at school, it had looked completely different. Compact, snarling, and fierce. You asked her why. What? She said. That had been here in the den. Oh, that thing. Sarah had moved by then, but how long was that after the first storm? After she got Mew. It had been a while since anyone talked about Pokemon. Well, my uncle got me a special edition Mew, first of all. She said, smirking a little. A little. But not looking away from the PlayStation game she was playing. That's why mine looked different. Second of all, mine can one-hit KO because it's the real Mew. We asked what she meant by that. Just what I said, Sarah said. Sarah replied. You cheated and got a fake Mew. So of course there'd be problems. Glitches and junk. You felt your cheeks redden. But not me, said Sarah said again. I got the real Mew. And only me. My brother was so jealous. Sarah's brother. What about him? Where does remembering that comment make you feel uneasy? You snap out of your reflections. Clock chime. You're in the den. Well, it's 11 o'clock now. 11. What am I gonna do? Just talk to Sarah again? Ask if Sarah thinks this storm will be as bad as the last one. You remember the storm? Asked Sarah. Yeah, you say, nodding. But no one remembers the storm, she says. It was big, it took down the trees. That's impossible, Sarah says. Impossible. No one remembers it. But I do. Sarah shakes her head. No, no, you don't understand. Please, I'm not messing with you. But this is important. But this, this is different. Something's different. He said no one would remember the storm. He. He came out of the storm. I was home alone. Sarah begins her eyes, growing distant. Mom was at work. Dad was. Dad was at the bar. I answered the door when the knocking started. He said he was lost and hungry. He said he could help me. All I had to do was promise to feed him. Expression. Feed me. Sarah tenses. What is that? It's my uncle, says Sarah. Sarah says, or that's what he told me to call him. I don't really know. I don't know what he, it, is. What? I want to go home. No, Sarah says. You can't. You can't. He's already on his way bad expression. No! There it is. Like a voice. Not something you hear, exactly. But still, somewhere in the back of your head. Sarah heard it too. See? She asks. See? He's almost here. I'm calling my mom. Calling, passing hesitantly through the now empty dining room. You enter the kitchen, where the phone sits on the counter. You dial your mom's work number and wait. She picks up after three rings. Things are really looking weird here. What? What do you mean? I just want to go home, Mom, please. Something in her voice seems to give her pause. Okay, she says, after a moment. I'll call the sitter and tell her to come pick you up. It'll probably be an hour. Is that okay? Yes, yes, thank you. But the uncle's coming in at 12. And it's 11. Well, too late now, I guess. Of course, she says, with the hint of a sigh. I'll call her now, okay? She'll be there in an hour. Be safe, she hangs up. Hey, can you get out of here? Come on. 
Come our day. Steam. I forgot to turn it off. Return to the den and pack your things. You return to the den. Sarah's sitting silently on the floor as you come in. You're leaving, aren't you? She says. I don't want to be friends with you anymore. I should have known it was different. You were remembering too much. Begin packing your stuff. Please, says Sarah, please don't go. I've never not fed him. And if I don't, I'm not sure what will happen. So you just want me to get eaten or what? Whatever. No, please no, she replies. It's not. I think he'll kill me. Do you understand? He would have killed me if I didn't. Could you packing in silence? Why could you hear him? She asks. But it doesn't seem like she expects you to answer. You both lapse, you both lapse into an awkward silence. Eventually, a car horn, a car honks outside. You get to leave. Sarah has one, wandered over to the fireplace and is looking into its unlit depths as you walk out the door and into the night. The sitter's familiar car is parked out front. As you walk closer, you see your little sister in the back seat. Still in her pajamas, the sitter, a high school girl who lives down the street from you, looks incredibly unhappy to be here, but you think you'll be able to handle her. As you climb into the car, you cast one last look, one last look over your shoulders, back to the house. The front door is closed. You suddenly can't remember if you did that yourself. The lights in the den are still burning. As the sitter pulls away from the house, you stare out the window at Sarah's house. The lights blurred and magnified by the rain streaming down the glass. Eventually, it all slides out of view. You find out the next afternoon about the fire. It started in a den, say the papers. There was known to be a fireplace. Apparently, it was left smoldering in the night. There were no survivors. Arson is suspected, since an accelerant would have helped the flames overcome the night's heavy rains. But nothing definite is ever publicly released on this account. One day after school, you ride your bike by to check it out. Parts of the house still stand, walls and beams blackened by the flames. The yellow caution tape has been looped around the outside, and the rubble hasn't yet been totally cleared out by the city. You decide to investigate. The second floor has mostly, either mostly burned away or fallen through, but standing in what used to be the den, you look up to the hole that would have been Sarah's room. The broken glass and charred drywall crunch beneath your feet. Until you step on something that isn't glass. You look down. There, in the mess, is what looks like a Game Boy. It's a Game Boy Color, not all scuffed or damaged, and the back is a single cartridge, a copy of Pokemon Blue. Let's take it. You take Sarah's Game Boy, looking from side to side, as if anyone might actually be watching. You pick up the Game Boy and flick on the power switch. After clicking through the Pokemon in intro screen, you find there is no saved game on a cartridge. It's like a brand new copy. You turn off the Game Boy and stuffing it in your pocket, you turn home. Your mom is standing in the kitchen when you arrive, doing dishes and your little sister is watching some annoying cartoon. Remember to take a bath and get dressed before 7, mom calls. Remember? You're fairly certain she never told you to do that in the first place. You walk into the kitchen, dropping your backpack on a linoleum floor. Why do I need to do all that? Silly, she says. Your mom turns from her sink to smile at you. And your throat tightens when you see how glassy and empty her eyes are. Don't you remember? She asks. Your uncle is coming over for dinner to celebrate his new job. Uh. The uncle who works for Nintendo. Hey, that was third. 
That was a long ending. That was a long game. And it, it looked like there were different endings too, just from what I was doing. It was either I could stay be to 12 to meet the, meet the uncle. Uh, not take the Game Boy. There might have been some other stuff too. I don't know. But we could try. Let's see if I could quickly do it. Yeah. Oh, man. I got ending five. Do you want to continue? What's this one? Just play games. Take it easy. Have a good time. Nothing to get freaked out over. Meet your guests at the door. Okay. Try to run, but it may turn out to be a game of hide and seek. Huh. All right. So let's try again. Because I like to get most of the endings. What is that? Repetition with a difference. It is not the time for running. Go where you're not wanted. Go where you've been told you can't go. Let's go from seven. No, he doesn't drink, I'm sure. Blah, 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 blah. So let's get the first ending. All right. School, hour passes, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay, she's gone. Watch Sarah play. Wow, a while. We're in the den. Time is at 10. Two more. School, hour passes, you are in the den. And one more. The grandfather clock chimes the hour as Sarah suddenly looks up from the N64. It's time, she says. Time for what? Whoa. Someone knocks at the front door. That's him, says Sarah. I should go let him in. As she leaves the den, she real you realize you could follow, but a part of you really fights. feels like being scared for you. Let's follow. The knock. Continues persistently as you follow Sarah to the front of the house. Outside the pebbled glass of the front window, you can see a tall, dark shadow. Sarah goes to the door, undoes the dead bolt, cracks it open. You can come in, she says to whoever stands out there on the porch, and looks over her shoulder at you. Sorry, she says. Before you can ask what there is to be sorry about, the door slams open. No, child. Come closer, child. No more worries, child. No more child. No more worries, child. Hello, child. Cash sign fear equals name. Cash sign screaming equals sea star, child. Hello, child. Hello, child. Hello, child. Hello, child. Hello, child. The uncle who works for Nintendo. That's one, that's the undefined error. You met the uncle who works for Nintendo. All right, so let's do that again. This time I'm gonna go hide. School, hour passes, blah, blah, blah. School, hour passes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, midnight, she's gone. School, hour passes, blah, blah, blah. School, hour passes, in the den. And school. Now it passes. You are in the bed. Time for what? Someone knocks out the door. Yay! You slip into the plain white box that is about the size of a shower. But on the front of the house, you can hear the front door slam open. After that, there's a question mark there. Can I click it? After that, you don't hear anything except bad expression. Child. The rain? It 
except the rain. No, not just the rain. But that voice in the back of your head like that expression. I am coming for you, Tony. Like something you can't close. No, I can't click it. Like something you can't even begin to describe. Will you lock the door behind you? Clear it open easily. Something locks in. for Nintendo. That was the run! You tried to hide, but the uncle who works for Nintendo found you. What's this one? It's definitely weird here. You decide you don't feel like spending a night, call your mom and take him. Be sure you have enough time for your wife to show up. Aha! Uh -huh. Back. So that's that one. Get out of there. Some things you remember don't will match what you see. Learn what you what you can, ask questions, have a serious talk. Don't be mean, but still get out of there. Don't be mean, but still get out of there. Learn what you can, ask questions, have a serious talk. I don't know what that means, actually. Feel like spending the night. Alright, so I'll save that last one for later. Let's try to get the other ones. Uh, go to the kitchen. Save, move. All right. Run back to the den. Tell Sarah about her parents. I want to go home. Wait. So I come back. But I saw them. What? Oh. All right. That's one thing. Time passes. Clock chimes. You're in the corner. All right. Well, three wings. You want to go home? Yes. Time to pack your things. The clock chimes it as you come. <laughs> Quietly begin gathering your things. What are you doing? What? You can't leave. It's almost time. I'm not having fun. But you will. I promise. There's so much stuff I had planned for tonight. I was going to let you play the next Zelda game. The one that's not even out yet. Before you can say anything, she's already running upstairs. Sarah continually runs up and down the stairs, bringing you games and consoles while you pack up your things. Every time she prints up something new, you ignore her or brush it off with an uncaring shrug. Please, Sarah says, just stay. Stay the night, please. Outside, you can hear a car horn honk. No, you say. And with your night bag slung over your one shoulder, you march to the front door and exit into the night. She walks, sitter. You cast one look over your shoulder back to the house. Sarah is standing in the doorway, totally still, not screaming, not crying, not doing much of anything. The car begins to pull away from the house as you watch. You see her parents appear in the doorway behind her. Don't wait. Without acknowledging you, Sarah's parents lay their hands on her shoulders. You recognize in their moments, movements something unnatural, something stiff and mechanical. They turn Sarah back into the house, the door closing just as everything slides out of view. When you turn around in your seat to look at the back window, you can't even see the house's lights. Sarah doesn't show up at school Monday or Tuesday. Or Wednesday. On Thursday, you ask your teacher, Mr. Scott, where Sarah is. He blinks at you confusedly. Oh, he says, eventually. Sarah? Well, I'm surprised she didn't tell you about this. But she and her family moved away. The house is empty when you ride your bike by that afternoon. 
that somehow seemed even larger without anyone, anything, or anyone in it. A for sale sign stands in the front yard, stands in the yard out front. Go home. You never see Sarah again, and eventually, as the years pass, you forget about her entirely. The uncle who works for Nintendo. That's another ending. Hmm. So there's just this one. Oh man, I gotta stretch the legs a little bit. Sitting down hurts. Sitting down hurts a lot. Ugh. Man, legs, man, legs. Alright, back. Uh... You know, this reminds me a lot of that one Afraid of the Dark episode where we just moved into his uncle's house and the closet in the basement eats people and then gives you stuff for it if you feed it. This is about the same story. What's the inspirations? I saw please by Pokemon. Her pound, her flesh. No, I don't think it actually, um, I don't think it, this actually has the, uh, Afraid of the Dark episode, which is kind of weird because the Afraid of the Dark episode was like 19, in the 1990s, so. All right, uh, have this and then this I'll do at the end because I think this is like a secret ending or something. I don't know this one, I have to ask her questions. But then I have to leave? Didn't I do that? Wait. No, I don't. I don't. I'm not taking. The, I don't think I have to take the Game Boy for that ending then. And he doesn't drink. So. Let's go to the kitchen. See that. They aren't moving. Go back to the den. Go back to the den. Uh, about her husband. This isn't a joke. Play a little. Circling back. What? My uncle's coming to visit. Time passes. We're in the den. So, think about Sarah's uncle. It was very weird. Showed you. Only one. No one else. Color faded. Managed to get it. Construction site. Bad storm. Need that. Need the bad storm. Oh, you agreed. Out of your reflection. Remember my me. Eventually, including you, look different. Fierce. Why? Here. I can't remember. The real Mew. Jealous. Uneasy. You snap out of your reflection, you are in the den. You are by Sarah. Thank you, okay. Around midnight, she's gone. Asked about Uncle's visit. So why is your uncle coming? But I thought he worked for Nintendo. Does Nintendo have a... What sort of business? I'm not sure I believe you. I don't believe your uncle works for Nintendo. Clench your teeth and wait. Take moments to be dazed. You realize she was close to crying. Crying. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's have a breather. Uh, talk to Sarah. Ask if Sarah thinks this storm is as much of a. Do you think the storm would be as bad as the other one? You said, remember the storm? It was big, it took down trees. But I do. No, no, you don't understand. Who? Listen. It's the same story. Sarah says, well, that's what he told me to call him. I don't really know. I don't know what he it is. Yes. So, if you do this at 11, you still have time. If you do it at 11.30, I believe you don't. Sarah frowns. He gets weak. He can't do as much. Is that... Is that why things have been different? Is he weaker now? Fire on this account. Check it out. 
decide to investigate crunch beneath your feet it's in class game boy you leave the game boy you leave the ruined house and hop back on your bike pedaling back home your mom doesn't have to work tonight and since she knows you're taking recent events hard she's promised to take you and your little sister to the movies you don't think about sarah at all and this ending here is the suicide ending that the warning in the beginning was talking about which is very uh, sad very it's very messed up but i don't know so i have all of this i have now i just need that one all right no he doesn't drink so just wait till 12 school an hour passes in the den so school hour passes in the den floor Thank you. From midnight, she's gone. Talk to school. School. Our passes. We can talk to games. So we're going to be the same thing. Is there games? So I'm actually like games. Actually, we've never really seen this. I, I have. I don't remember this either. Sarah raises an eyebrow at your remark. What do you like about them? Being a hero in stories. Yeah, she says. That's a nice feeling. Something in her voice tells you she's thinking about something. Something. Do you think it's weird to play games? She asks something. And then, before you can say anything else, you mean like, is it weird for a girl to play games? They say the same stuff about me. Girls don't play video games. Why, do you, why don't you play girl games? You're not as good as this as a boy would be. I don't want to trade Pokemon with you. Yes, yeah, says Sarah, yeah. I'm sorry they're like that. I really am. I'm sorry. Man. I'm sorry I don't stand up for you. Sarah looks surprised. As if she never considered this a possibility before. No, she said. No. You wouldn't have to be wrong. But I should. Sarah turns her attention to the Nintendo, leaving you alone with your thoughts. The clock chimes. What time is it now? Uh. No, I don't have to. Do I have to think about it? No, that would just be the mute. Right? Talk to Sarah again? It occurs to you that even though Sarah does really well. Oh, no, I'm going to go here. Is your uncle here? Someone has to be front of the door. Get to it. You pull out Sarah's Game Boy Color. The Game Boy is somewhere behind the half textured walls, grumbling to itself. Start! This is weird. <laughs> Pokedex. This isn't the time to use that. Pokemon. This isn't the time to use item. You're carrying a Game Boy Color. You? You hope this works back. Option? You? You hope this works? It came to you after you picked up Sarah's Game Boy. Still weak from the night and sleep. In that moment, you had to understand what it was and what it did. How many times had you not made it through the night? How many of your friends had gone before you? Would come after you? How many had taken the Game Boy? It promised you what it promised everyone every time. 
the newest games, the best consoles, the best strategies, and most the most talent. The knowledge of tricks and secrets. A family who could and would provide these things. You could play well, play forever. You would always be the best, so long as you fed it. And you had an idea. You did not like your first request, but it was hungry, and it had no other choice. So here you are. probably not a good idea to save when bad expression stop this child and when things are getting so messed up options fast 11 years old when she best comes oh jeez in the corner in her car park so it's part of the what was that Did you come back for me? Because we're friends. It's suffering for It's either the verge of death or making the final game to stop either you, either of you from leaving. So it's still crying. Take Sarah's hand, boy. No, 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 no. I hate you. I'm so hungry. You really came back from me. You really think we can do this? Yes. With a sad smile, she nods. You want to keep going? That expression. Stop it, stop it, stop it. No, no, no. That expression. Oh, come back, come back, come back. Before, you gave me a sense of a of place, a sense of who I was, of who I am, of who I could be. Oh, I wanted to read that. I guess there was a time limit. I wanted to read it so much. 
I'm sorry you are hurting, and I did not listen. This isn't who we have to be. It doesn't control us. It is only our choice, even if it wants us to think it is. You are my friend. No more games. You are my friend, and I am here for you. The uncle who works for Nintendo. What a game, man. What a game. Much different from what you would think it would be, but it is what it is. Author's notes. <laughs> into this game and yet if you are reading this it's because you attained the ending after which I do not think there can be any more any more play hold on I gotta fix my mic it's gonna be a little noisy for a little bit there we go that should be a little better I haven't unlock unlocked all the endings that we're playing to I'm sorry for what partly seems to be a blunder in design alternatively you can read the short essays that follow since their appearance has here like tedious and greater. Nevertheless, if you like more traditional hidden content, please click here. Well, let's read it. Yeah, well, you have unlocked alternate outfits for all characters. What? During your next playthrough, you do your do your best to imagine the characters wearing different outfits than the one the ones you imagined them wearing before. You and your friend are now dressed like Oron and Titus from Final Fantasy X. Your friends and parents are all wearing horse armor. Please pay tell me five dollars for this privilege. Whatever, man. The uncle works for Nintendo has been replaced with DreamWorks' beloved character Shrek. Oh, God. But really, your imagination is the only limit. That's the magic of games. Back to credits. Oh, that's funny. What's this one, though? Oh, well, I don't feel like reading it. On sleepovers. The four projects, uh, however, when I was young, parents forced. I never had any friends over. The environment of my home felt too tense or too hostile for me. And I have, and for me to have anyone spend the night, I was afraid of what would happen if someone came into my life and saw how I lived. Which, in retrospect, was not even particularly bad so far as unhappy families go, but the emotional tuner of my home was often overwhelming to a child with my disposition. So I usually visited friends, but never had them over to my place. What I enjoyed the most about visiting friends' homes, and this was true even well after the divorce, was seeing how those I took to be normal lived. Clean houses with open windows, parents who talked to one another, and more video games than I would know what to do with. Games were a precious resource, and I carefully considered which one I asked for on my birthday. Or for Christmas to ensure it would keep me occupied for the six months until I got the next. Visiting friends gave me a chance to vicariously experience what it would be like to, say, own a PlayStation and a GameCube and still get a new game every month. I fear this makes my friendships sound purely instrumental, which of course they were not. I've had many great and supportive friends. I don't know if they ever felt that my relationships with them were a cover for my keen interest in their games, but I felt the guilt anyway. In the end, I can only thank them for their generosity. Making games ru roughly coincide with me beginning therapy for my anxiety, which was a problem that life in the world, up until a certain point, had trained me not to see what I had. To be perfectly accurate, making games actually preceded preceded therapy in attempting to tell stories that immerse the player in a thick atmosphere of vile to severe mental distress I spent most of my life I began to recognize how many of my reference points of these feelings could be traced to habits I'd learned or constructed in childhood so this is actually a, mm, a lot I mean three paragraphs I might as well read it both making games and going to therapy present opportunities to return those to those behave to these behaviors 
and the events that seem to instantiate, instantiate, instantiate them. If the visit to a friend's house is something of a primal scene to me, the way I unconsciously return to it again and again to suggest that it is, then this game became my attempt to acknowledge it and interrogate it more fully than I have before. That's why I chose to set it vaguely in 1998 or 1999. If you want to think about it this way, I admit it is trite. My games are attempts to make up for lost time. I'm inviting you into part of the idiosyncratic, idiosyncratic haunted house that functions as my mind, where the lived experience of sleepovers collides with the imagined horrors and potential catastrophes that appear, always flourish there, unbidden. I am a single person, and not a very interesting one in most re respects. But if I can leverage this bit of technology to facilitate some sort of human feeling between you and me, then I'll consider it a success. What? Which one was that again? The sleepovers one? Yeah, it was. And topicality. I just got a little of the sniffles. Hopefully it doesn't uh make my voice sound any different. Or it makes me sound stuffy. Yeah, I read that already. Different games. Game I make has the same starting point, which is a question. How is this project different from the last one? I mean, if you guys want to read this, I've already showed you how to get to the ending of the game. So, uh, yeah. Here are all the author's notes. I. The author or the creator actually tells you some of the aspects of what they've gone through in these notes so if you want to read that you can i've already i've shown you how to get through the game very easily in fact you could do it in about 10 20 minutes if you just rush through everything but i did it within an hour because i like to read stuff you guys better be okay with that but yeah that was the uncle who works for nintendo i hope you guys enjoyed because i certainly did i really like this game i even though it's a story game or I'm or no, no, I mean, it's mostly just a story. But, you know, it's pretty good. It reminds me of another game I played a while ago where I just click stuff and then progress through. But this is more of um, making choices and then having it being told back to you in a uh, worded form instead of a picture form. And you have to use your imagination to figure it out. But it was, I still liked it. it. You don't need those super supreme graphics or pictures to define what a game is or what is trying to be portrayed. But yeah, it's uh, this game was very good. I really liked it. I mean, the story was very well told and depends on how you yourself take it. This was more like um, some the game creator's way of telling their story through this type of format, which I hope they continue to make this. So continue to make games like these. So, hope you guys enjoyed, because I certainly did. And I will be signing out and bringing you another game in the your future. I'm trying out a new uh, way of ending the videos. <laughs> Announce his voice. Thank you for watching. And I will be back with another video soon. Bye bye.